Hey guys, I'm Logon411, and in this video, I'm going to do something that I haven't quite done before, but something that I've seen other YouTubers do already. So I thought to myself, hey, why not I get a crack at it? So, since Jurassic World is coming out next week, what better way to honor Jurassic Park's new installment than to talk about sequels? Now, movie sequels aren't really that big of a thing. But nowadays, whenever someone even mentions the word sequel, people automatically groan. Oh, there are too many sequels nowadays. Not enough original uh, creative ideas for movies. Hollywood's just trying to make sequels to make a quick buck and to sell out. And while I do kind of agree there are more sequels right now than there needs to be, it still doesn't make me think any less of movie sequels. I still love them. Because while we will still get a bad sequel to a really, really good movie, <coughs> sell out. there's still going to be that one sequel that will surprise the massive audience. And that is why I've devised my own top 10 favorite movie sequels of all time. So, why don't I just shut up about explain all this? And just get right to it. Here are the top 10 movie sequels. Do the sequel. The studio wants more. While they wait for Tom Hanks to make Toy Story 4. I thought it was the end, but no, my friends. This is when we get to do it all again. Harry Potter, The Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, take in mind that I love all the Harry Potter movies, every single one of them. But to me, the one that stands out the most out of all of them is the third installment, The Prisoner of Azkaban. Why is that? Well, because this movie was the game changer in the series. Because, I mean, like, the previous two movies that Chamber of Secrets, Sorcerer's Stone, I got that mixed up, yeah, forget it. They, yeah, they had their frightening moments, uh, I mean, like, second one, Spiders, ooh, um, first one, Ogre, ooh, first one also, there's a face on the back of the guy's head, oh, that's just lame, that's just, there. Mm. But the third one, right on the beginning, when they get on the train, there's this guy with a floating cloak thing that sucks out Harry's face. And, like, for some reason, like, at that moment, the whole series changed. And now one scene, it's like the whole series took a whole different tone. And also, like, out of all the Harry Potter movies, it's the most beautiful out of all of them. It has the best cinematography, which kind of makes sense because this movie was directed by the only director who only directed one Harry Potter movie. And sorry I'm, if I might mispronounce this director's name. He's a Spanish director, so that's unfair. But I know you guys are going to correct me because no offense, but that's just you guys, yeah. Alfonso Cuaron. Yes, I did get that wrong. But to give you a more better idea to who he is, he's also the director who directed Birdman, which won Best Picture last year, and he made a Harry Potter movie. Yeah, and it shows, really. And also, you get the sense that, like, these kids were 13, um, Dan Radcliffe, Emma Watson, Rupert Grant, Rupert Grant, three of them, they seemed like they put on really, really 
good performances. I mean, not great, not spectacular, Oscar-worthy, but they're generally really, really good. They actually had a director who knew how to work with kids. I th I'm guessing from his experience working with kids in li A Little Princess. Yeah, funny story. <laughs> like, yeah, like I said before, there were there were attempts for jump scares in the Harry Potter movies, but like as a kid, the first time I watched this, it was the scene <laughs> when Harry first um, goes in his room and he gets his school supplies from that those two guys that like help him out and goes to his room and like sees that in the room there's other book that he gets and like the book that he's trying to get has teeth on him on it and I guess he's trying to kill him like he has to stomp on it Tom, uh, it's Hogwarts magic Look, muggle but like um like he goes like this like and try and he's trying to look for it and then suddenly the thing that made me jump and I was watching this first time with my sister and go <laughs> it went straight for the camera and uh, me as my like yeah eight year old self I was like <gasps> and I was like high in the corner fell off my chair Maybe I didn't, I don't know, but like my sister was there and she like looked right at me he's like, Joe, she paused it. No, she stopped the movie right then and there because I was just like crying. I, I was that scared at that part. It was... <sighs> Thinking about that part just makes me frack up laughing because like it scares me. Jesus, I mean, huh. But yeah, it's really really the best out of all the eight movies i thought it was the end but no my friends this is when we get to do it all again the hunger games catching fire the hunger games catching fire is the follow-up to the first hunger games movie but i will admit the written paperback version of this story of Catching Fire. It wasn't my favorite, really. I mean, like, the first one had, like, um, kids fighting each other, actually fighting each other. Second book, Catching Fire, like, only, like, the first half is, like, a whole entire half of the book, quarter of the book, is, like, her, like, and Peta dealing with the aftermath of it and, like, going to different districts and, like, life is hard. But this movie, it actually took a book that I didn't really like that well, and it actually made it very entertaining. It actually made it like it better than the first installment. And it really surprised me. Maybe it's just the actors, Jennifer Lawrence, she's, everyone says it, and it's true. I'm gonna fly out say she's this generation's Meryl Streep. Yeah, I said it, come at me. And yeah, and honestly, like, the second half of the movie, when they're in the games, I, it felt more intense than the first movie when they're at the games. Honestly, really, really, really was. It did exactly what I always wish a sequel does. Expand the emotion of the characters, develop them even more, and make the situation even tougher for them. And by God, things went really, really bad for them. I thought it was the end, but no, my friends, this is when we get to do it all again. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Now, the reason why I put this sequel at the very low part of the list is because there is only one thing, but a big thing in this movie that I, I kind of took me out of it. So, like, at one core of the movie, like, some parts of it, you have the humans. And, at, like, the rest parts of the movie are with the apes. And this is the reason why this movie is on this list. I... <laughs> I actually loved the scenes and the aspects with the apes more than I did with the first um, prequel apes movies.
because like while the first one was really really good, I really really loved it. I think it's one of the best prequels out there. This one, for some reason, really really tops it. Tops it. Well, for what reason? In this movie, um, like um, Caesar, along with his other ape colony, has evolved now. They've become more smarter, like us, and they've learned to communicate with each other with sign language. Sign. And that's an aspect of the movie that I really, really love. Like, I loved each word that they said to each other, and mmm. Like, every word that they said was just beautiful. And another um, aspect half of the movie that um, also made it on this list is um, the scenes not just with the apes, but the apes communicating with the humans. Really, I I never thought I would say um, like I watched an ape movie and I actually like the apes more than the humans. I, correct me for saying this, but I actually wanted the apes to win. I actually want. I didn't really care the, for the humans. Screw the humans. Yeah, I was up for the apes. And I think another reason because of that is because of their leader Caesar, like. He's like the smartest one out of all of them now, because like he um, got that gene and that um, DNA, and that intelligence IQ in him first, and gave it to the rest of the apes. And also, it um, it has a great performance done by the great Andy Serkis. Man, I love that guy. He's one of my favorite actors. He's there. Oh my God. He's the very definition of underappreciated. And like, I think his, um, he perfected um, what was already great for him in his performance as Caesar in the first Rise of Planet of the Apes movie and made it even better in this. And like, it wasn't just him. Like, they also got like a ton of other um, actors to do motion capture censures for the other apes. I also really, really love the score. Like, this. I'm not joking. This has one of the best scores in a movie I've seen in re I've heard in recent years. I mean, the soundtrack, the main soundtrack that I actually have my have my iPod, is so beautiful. It actually sounds like a real actual lullaby. Like it goes like na 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 na. I could be over exaggerating it. It's just one of the most majestic things you will ever hear. And I think that's a good word for this movie. Yeah, majestic.